In 1848, the two ships of the British Franklin expedition disappeared with all their crew while searching for the Northwest Passage. The fate of crews of the HMS Erebus and HMS Terror was a daunting mystery which was finally solved with the aid of a map revealed to Franklin's widow by the spirit of a three-year-old girl. An overland rescue party and several expeditions had been sent out to find the ships and many theories put forward to explain what had happened. By 1850, Britain was captivated by the mystery and Lady Jane, the wife of the expedition's leader, Sir John Franklin, became increasingly desperate for answers. It was Franklin's fourth Arctic expedition, having previously almost starved to death on an overland trek. He'd become known in the press as the man who ate his boots, as he had eaten his shoe leather in order to survive. In her desperation, Lady Jane had become known for dabbling in the paranormal, consulting seers and clairvoyants in attempts to connect to her husband. It was around this time that she received a strange letter from a wealthy shipbuilder named Captain William Coppen. He claimed that the ghost of his daughter knew where to locate the Franklin expedition. A resident of Londonderry, Northern Ireland, Coppen lived with his wife, her sister, and the couple's five young children. Coppen's three-year-old daughter, Louisa, whom they called Wheezy for short, had passed away in May 1849 of gastric fever. But she had never left the family, and soon after her death, her siblings excitedly reported seeing a ball of bluish light that they were all convinced was Wheezy. Wheezy's brother would spot the hovering blue orb and run to hug it, striking his face against the wall and causing it to bleed. The children even began setting a place for Wheezy at meals. Coppen himself witnessed the phenomenon once. One night, Wheezy's older sister, nine-year-old Anne, informed her aunt that she saw the words, Mr. McKay is dead, glowing on the wall of her bedroom. Although her aunt was unable to see the words herself, the following day she nevertheless inquired after Mr. McKay, a banker friend of the family. She found out that he had indeed passed away during the night. Weeks later, the aunt suggested that the children draw on Wheezy's apparent clairvoyance by questioning her regarding the fate of Sir John Franklin. Wheezy responded spectacularly, filling the room with an arctic scene that revealed two ships amidst snowy mountains and narrow channels. When asked whether Franklin himself was still alive, Wheezy showed what Anne described as a round-faced man climbing down the mast and waving his hat. Wheezy answered a question about his exact location with a series of abbreviations which included PRI and BS. The spectral illuminations were only able to be seen by Anne, who copied them onto paper and showed them to her father when he returned from a trip. Coppen wasn't completely dismissive, but didn't act on the information straight away. Then, in May 1850, he heard that Lady Jane was preparing to send another ship to search for her husband, and decided to write her a letter describing Wheezy's advice. Coppen wrote to her that Wheezy's abbreviations had led him to believe that Sir John Franklin was in the Prince Regent Inlet off Barrow Strait. He encouraged Lady Jane to direct the commander of her search expedition to that area and soon after met with her in person to confirm his advice. According to one account, a book written in 1889 by paranormal researcher J. Henry Skews, Wheezy's vision caused Lady Jane to point her expedition south towards Prince Regent Inlet rather than north as she had been planning. Reportedly, the Coppins repeated the same seance with Wheezy several times, 
resulting in her information producing an increasing stream of intelligible words, some referring to specific place names such as Point Victory and Victoria Channel. Coppin's conviction seemed to encourage Lady Jane and she instructed him to share Wheezy's revelations with a select few influential figures about town. She was to see off multiple search expeditions in the hope that someone would return with news of her husband from beyond the inlet. The first expedition encountered the inlet frozen and couldn't get through, but returned to break the news in England that another expedition had discovered three graves on Beachy Island. This confirmed that the Terra and Erebus had spent at least part of the winter in Wellington Channel, suggesting that Franklin and his men had sailed on towards Prince Regent Inlet after stopping on the island. Captain William Kennedy, commander of Lady Jane's second mission, actually spent a few days with the Coppins in Londonderry and was said to have corroborated Wheezy's account although not seeing her messages for himself. Although navigating through Prince Regent Inlet, his mission pivoted westward and returned empty-handed. In the meantime, a Hudson's Bay Company surveyor called John Ray was making some progress. In 1854, he had spoken with local Inuit people who reported encountering a few dozen white men on King William Island. Ray had even bought several English-made objects from the locals, including a plate bearing Sir John Franklin's name. Lady Jane subsequently focused on King William Island, financing an expedition in the late 1850s. In 1859, this trip finally uncovered a decisive clue as to the Franklin expedition's fate. A boat, skeletons, and a note which explained that Franklin had perished in June 1847. His crew had abandoned the ice maroon ships in April 1848. Lady Jane was soon to validate that Wheezy's leads, as transcribed by Anne, had actually been correct. She testified in writing that the ghost's chart accurately represented the ships as travelling in a channel believed at the time to be inaccessible, but since found to have actually been navigable. She confirmed that the names Victory and Victoria, written by the spectral child upon her chart, had corresponded with relevant locations. Point Victory on King William's land, where the crucial record of the Erebus and Terror was found, and Victoria Strait, where the ships were ultimately lost. Significantly, Lady Jane refused to return the original chart to Coppin. Paranormal historian Shane McCorristine theorised that this may have been because she feared a backlash of public ridicule if he published it. With her husband's demise no longer a mystery, consulting the supernatural was of no further value. Expedition leaders were later to deny that the long-dead toddler had influenced their exploratory journeys in any way. While the ghost of Little Wheezy did not single-handedly solve the mystery of the missing Franklin expedition, the idea that Franklin had travelled south instead of north did result in important discoveries. However, there is no evidence that either the Terra or the Erebus actually sailed through Prince Regent Inlet. When Wheezy imparted the vision of a robust Franklin waving his hat from the top of the mast, he had already been deceased for over two years. The ships themselves were located in 2014 and 2016 off the southwestern coast of King William Island, some distance from Prince Regent Inlet and south of the island's Victory Point. Inuit people in the area still want Sir John Franklin's body located and returned to England. Inuit oral historian Louis Kamokak was instrumental in locating the sunken ships through piecing together stories he heard as a child. A female elder had told him of finding what he believed to be a butter knife and Royal Navy rifle shot at a young age. 
Inuit narratives dating back to the time soon after the ships were abandoned described Inuit people boarding one of the vessels and finding a large, lifeless man seated in a dark room. In other accounts, Inuit hunters witnessed the burial of a ship's captain, who Kamakak suspected was Franklin. The story stayed in Kamakak's mind as he became determined to try and work out where they had occurred. He soon linked the stories to the Franklin expedition and did further research, later working with Canadian archaeologists in locating the ships exactly where he had predicted. Until his own passing in March 2018, Kamakak relentlessly searched for Franklin's remains. It has been noted that he and other Inuit believe that King William Island has been cursed ever since Franklin's doomed expedition, which saw the loss of 129 lives. Kamukak has said that he sought peace for himself, his land and his people.